In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own custom flip card interaction in the all new Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson and I make YouTube videos about once a week on Adobe Captivate, but sometimes also just other e-learning topics as well. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to like and share my videos with all your e-learning buddies. Today we're going to talk about the flip card widget in the all new Adobe Captivate. It's great. I really like the idea of having a flip card. However, one of the complaints that I'm seeing not only on the forums, but even in the comments of my YouTube videos, is that what's missing is the ability to add audio for each one of the flip cards. This is also true of the click to reveals and the timeline widgets and all that stuff. And that's caused me to uh, try to develop my own solutions to these particular widgets or interactions. So today I'm going to share with you my flip card solution. Hope you like it and let's take a look. Okay, before we get into building this interaction here, I'm just going to go through a little bit about how I've set up this slide here. There are essentially two blocks on this slide. Very simple. The first one is a text paragraph block, which you can get to from your add text blocks icon here. It's this one here. And what I've done is I've turned on the subtitle, turned off the title, turned on the subtitle. I wanted a smaller text there and I've customized the fonts and so forth. And I've included the body where I've got instructions on how to use this interaction, as well as a button block or button component within this block. I've added a second button and we've spaced those to be distributed uniformly across the slide here. So I have a back button and I have a next button. Once I have some additional slides, I'll program their functionality to work. The next button though, I don't want it to appear until the user has completed this interaction. And how you can do that is click on the next button itself and go up to this icon here, which allows you to select that and hide it during the publish. So when you first arrive on the slide, users will not see the next button. The next block that I have is a multi-column text block and you can add that to your slide from the add text blocks icon as well. What I've done in this case here is I've got my title, I've turned off my subtitle, I have a body of text, a button, and a card. And what makes this a little bit more unique than perhaps the default buttons that you've seen is I've customized these as well. I've got a solid fill for the shape, I've turned off the text for the button. As you can see here, if I had text there, I could put it, but I just want it to be a graphical user interface type element. And I've gone over to icon, turned on the icon, and I've chosen the icon from the assets library that Adobe Captivate provides and made sure that my color was a solid white color. And that's it. It's, it's got a unique uh, look and feel to it uh, as opposed to just a text button. And I've done the same for all three of them there. When you arrive on this slide, I don't want the text in the middle to be visible. I only want to see the title, the item, if you will, and the flip icon here. So I'm going to select the text here and we're going to do the same thing we did to the next button and hide those during publish. So we'll do that for the second one and the third one here. So we're good to start to build this interaction. Now, the first thing I want is some slide audio. Make sure that no component or block is selected. The easiest way to do that is to select the thumbnail of your slide in the slides navigator here. And we can go over to audio and import the audio clip that I've already prepared, but you can do your own. Click on slide audio here and open. You may get a prompt like this that asks if you want to extend the display time of the, the slide to 13.3 seconds. My audio is 13.3 seconds. The slide is three seconds. It just wants it to match. So I can't imagine why you would ever hit cancel. I'm just going to go ahead and select extend time and that's good to go. Now the first interaction that we're going to build is the one that takes care 
of displaying the next button only once all of these flip card icons have been pressed. And that's actually really easy to do in the all new Adobe Captivate. It was a lot more complicated in Captivate Classic, so I'm really happy about this improvement. I'm going to click on the Interactions icon next to my Properties Inspector here, and I'm gonna click on Add an Interaction. And this is going to be based on objects being clicked. So once these three objects are clicked, we will show the next button. It's the easiest interaction you can create and it makes forced navigation very easy to do. So I'm gonna do that and we'll just select the icons that we're going to use for this interaction. So once all three of these have been clicked, press next and then we are going to show our next button. Scroll down to the bottom, press next and done. And that's literally all you have to do for setting up that portion of this interaction. Now let's start to build our first flip card interaction here. How I want this to work is when you press the flip card icon, it will animate and reveal this text here and we'll hear the audio that goes with it. That's what makes this a little bit more unique than the widget that's available as part of Adobe Captivate. This allows you to really create a custom solution. I've chosen the way this whole thing looks, but you could customize your own appearance. Uh, unlike the widget where you're kind of locked into a particular style and look and feel. So we're gonna build this out uh, to do those two things. Now, when you press the, the button again, I wanted to stop the audio and go back to the undisplayed state of the additional content. So let's write that advanced action here. So let's click this uh, icon first of all, and uh, we're going to use our trigger as simply clicking or tapping this, uh, this icon, but we need a condition set up. We're gonna check a user variable which we'll create to see whether it's displaying the content or not displaying the content. So I'm gonna click on the plus icon here, and it's all gonna be based off of a variable which I've yet to create, but I'll show you how you can do it right from within this panel. So we're saying if our variable, and let's create that variable, plus, and I'm gonna call this card flipped. And the type of variable this is is a true false variable, and its default state will be false. In other words, we're not displaying the content or the card has not been fl uh, flipped. We could put a description in here if we wish, but I don't want to at this point. I'm just gonna hit create and that's done. Click outside the variables window to return to the normal user interface. And we'll go back to writing our conditional action. So if card flipped is equal to a value of false, which is what it is right now, press save, we want to do the following actions. Now, because there's slide audio, the only way to stop the slide audio, if someone presses this before the slide audio is done, is to pause the timeline. So that's gonna be our first action. Click more and go down to pause timeline and then click done. So that has the effect of stopping the slide audio from playing if your learner is impatient and wants to hear this content right away. Next, we're gonna show this text block here. So we'll choose show. And one of my favorite features of the all new Adobe Captivate is that you hover over these items. And even if you haven't labeled them correctly, it's very easy to find them. Text one is what we're looking for here. Next. Now here's where we can have a little fun. We can animate this so it doesn't look like it's just appearing but maybe kind of simulating what it might look like if it was flipped around. So let's scroll down to the bottom of our animation selections. And I kind of like this wipe horizontally. It kind of reminds me of, of a flip card in a way. And that gives you a neat effect. You can customize this with adjusting these parameters, but I'm gonna stick with the default for right now. Click done. And in case I've clicked on one of the other items first, I need to stop the audio that might be playing as a result of one of these other interactions. So let's click add new action, go to more, and we'll choose stop media and done. 
we need to update our variable from false, which is what it was when we started this interaction, to true. So I'm going to click on Add New Action, go under More, scroll down until I get to Assign Variable. We'll choose Card Flipped with a value of true, so that when we deal with the else portion, uh, it will choose that option instead of the first set of actions here. So I think we're pretty much good to go. So we're pausing the timeline, we're showing the text, we're stopping media, and assigning our flip card. The last thing we need before we move on is to play the audio clip that I have for this flip card here. So we'll click on Add New Action, More, Play Media, Browse, Card 1, or whatever you've called your audio clip for this, click open, and that's good to go. So done. Now, it probably doesn't matter in this case, but if you want all of these actions to occur somewhat simultaneously, you can select the first one, hold down your shift key and select the last one, and then merge these together so that they appear as one. So what happens if our variable has already been flipped and the variable has been assigned to true. Well, we're going to run the items that are in the else section and create a true toggle effect here. So, in this case here, if we are returning it to normal, if you will, we're going to do a, a number of things. We are going to, first of all, stop any media from playing. We're going to hide our text item text component, scroll down, next, and then done. And then we'll update our variable, card flipped with a value back to false as it was when we originally arrived on the slide, done. Now, what I would recommend that you do at this point is again, we can merge these items, probably again, don't need it, but it doesn't hurt to do that. Let's preview this and make sure that that first card works the way we expect it to before we replicate that for the remaining cards here. So I'm gonna hit preview. Here are three steps for improving your leadership skills. Press the icon on each card to learn more. Once you have fully explored this page, the next button will appear, allowing you to proceed with the course. Okay, so clicking on this. Identify strengths and weaknesses. Clicking it again stops the audio and returns it back to how it appeared at first there. So I think that works. Okay, so right about now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, that was a lot of little steps there just to create a very simple one card interaction. And now I'm expected to do it for two more times or three more times or four more times, depending on how many cards you want to display. But let me show you a shortcut here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on the icon for our first card and we're going to copy interactions. I'm going to select the icon for our second card and I can right click on that and paste the interactions. And what I end up with is a replicated version of those actions. Now, some of them are going to be pointing to the wrong variables. Some of them are going to be pointing to the wrong objects, but at least you have the skeletal structure of what you need and you can quickly make a couple of small changes to make this work for the second card. So let's take a look at our condition here. First, let's start by looking at the if portion. So let's edit this one here. If card flipped, well, we need a new variable, but guess what? In the process of duplicating this, it made a copy. It's called card flip one. Um, ideally, it would say two, but that's okay. You could edit it or you could just use it as is here. So if card flipped one is equal to a value of false, just like we did before, save that. We're going to perform the following actions. The first thing we need to change is the text component that we're pointing to here. So let's click the edit action. Click edit target and make sure to unselect text one and select text two instead. Scroll down to next, still have our little animation there, click done. 
Now let's update the assign variable card flip to be the new variable. Let's edit that action. We'll edit the user variable and we'll point at card flipped and we're going to make that a value of true. Click done. And now let's edit which audio clip we're going to play. So I'm going to edit this, click on edit the target, browse to where on my computer I have the second card audio clip, click open and done. Let's just take a look at the else portion here. We're still going to stop media, but we're going to hide text number two instead of text number one. So let's unselect text number one and select text number two. Next and done. And we'll just deal with our variable for this particular card here. Let's edit the action, edit the user variable and make sure we're pointed at card number one. And we're going to assign it a value back to false because we're returning it to normal. Click done. And that's it. So we've basically replicated with some small changes of card one to card two. Let's do the same thing for the third card. So I can right click this, copy interactions, select the new card icon, right click and paste interactions. So again, let's open up our if statement there. We'll edit which variable we're checking. And in this case, it will be card flip number two is equal to a value of false. Press save. We're still going to pause the timeline. Instead of showing text number two, we're going to show text number three. Make sure you unselect text number two and select text number three. Next. Still have our wipe effect there. Done. We're going to assign our variable card flip number two instead of number one. Let's select that with a value of true. Done. And now we'll play the clip for card number three in this case here. So let's edit the target for that. Browse to our audio clips. There's card number three, done. We'll go over to the else section and make sure that we're going to hide text number three. Don't forget to unselect text number two. And next, and done. And let's just update our variable that we're updating at this point here. We'll choose card flip two with a value of false. In other words, back to its normal state there. That's it. We've built this interaction. Let's do a preview and see if everything works the way we expect it to. I'm going to interrupt the slide audio as well as the audio for each one of these so we can quickly test that we don't get any crosstalk. Here are three steps for improving your leadership skills. Press the identify strengths and weaknesses. Great leaders are self-aware. Begin by define your leadership style. There's no one size fits all leadership style. Explore different become a master communicator. Effective communication is key to strong leadership. And of course, uh, once I click the third icon, I got my next button and your learners are good to go and continue with the rest of the e-learning project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.